you. Thank you. Maybe I must just explain a bit better where I come from. Although I work with small grains, especially wheat and barley and, and oats, and that's only a small part of my research. The biggest part of my research is optimization of herbicides. And that includes for all crops, orchards, vineyards, everything you can think of, as well as invasives. So, um, I just, because I did some research and I saw that glyphosate is quite largely used in invasive species for invasive controls, and since I've done glyphosate research for the past eight years, I thought maybe I can just come and share some of my research with you, and maybe then um, in future you can think back on this if you want to use, use glyphosate and then um, maybe optimize it and use it a bit better. <coughs> okay, so just for the people that don't know, glyphosate is a, a, a non-selective systemic herbicide, meaning it's get ta it gets taken up into the plant and it works from inside out. It's used for broad spectrum weed control. So it kills, and it kills nearly everything. Um, all plant types, grasses, woody plants, perennials, and then it's also used for your alien invasive species. <coughs> I certainly don't have to um, define what the alien invasive is since all of you work with it daily. Um, but the thing is that an invasive plant or an alien species can have economic, environmental and socio-economic impacts on agriculture and ecosystems. So rather than back to the glyphosate, it's one of the few herbicides that's registered for use on alien invasives. But I don't know how many of you know that <coughs> glyphosate is highly sensitive to water quality. So if you put high, if you use water with high salt levels with glyphosate, you won't get good control. Doesn't matter what you put with it, doesn't matter the rate you use, you won't get good control. And this is due to a, a, a thing that happens within the mixture that we call antagonism. Your herbicides get chemical, chemically modified. So what do we do in our industry? We add adjuvants to overcome this antagonism. And the biggest one, and it's registered for use with all um, glyphosates, is ammonium sulfate. So it's an adjuvant. You add it, it's not a herbicide. It doesn't have any herbicidal activities. It only enhances your herbicide. So there's several, several adjuvants adju um, registered for use with glyphosate. And, what, and then, then why can't you use anything? If, there's, if this is registered, why don't you use this? Why can't you use this one or replace this one with this one? But it doesn't work that way. Um, they can't, they are not all the same and they can't substitute one another. They reduce and they can reduce efficacy and lead to poorer weed control. So the aim of my study was to check which adjuvants you can use to get the best results with glyphosate. Okay, so we did two, two experiments. In our experiments we, also, we always use a Vina sativa. It's cultivated oats. But we use, we use um, there's two cultivars that mimics uh, herbicide, uh, wheat, wheat um, characteristics. So we use the two cultivars that, that, that um, does that. We use a cultivar Schederberg in this experiment. And then it's normal greenhouse um, procedures. We plant them in pots, we thin them, and we spray them with a cabinet sprayer. And then, um, Later on, we evaluate it. For this experiment, we used distilled water or normal water, um, no salts, pH quite normal, just to show you that even if you live in a perfect world, glyphosate isn't going to work 100%. Adjuvants are not going to make it work 100%. So, just oh, when, when I show you results, think when you see the results. If the water quality takes up and takes goes down. What picture would you see there? Like we, we, we use the wiki light so that you know the herbicide doesn't go into the soil. Okay, this is just the statistics, how we did it. We did a randomized complete block design. We had four reps for treatment. We evaluated by way of fresh mass, took some photos, and then did some data analysis and did ANOVAs. Okay, so this is the picture you get when you 
put different adjuvants with. This is all registered adjuvants. <coughs> Less than 10% control if you add it with glyphosate. It's registered. Compare it with this one, more than 90%. It's registered. And that's what's making it very... For instance, the lady that talked before me, what, what if she maybe used that one? It was registered and she didn't know it. Isn't that the reason why the plants didn't die? Now I go next season and use this one, and you think it just was a good season. You actually just made a better choice of adjuvant. Those three is alarming, alarming, less than 50%, and it's registered for use with glyphosate. So if you look at the plants, those three I'll just show you there. There's the other plants, but those three are just so happy growing. It actually, there's the control, but these ones are picking up. It looks as if you put some fertilizer with it. <laughs> so now you want to eradicate your invasive, but now next month it's growing happily and healthily because you added some fertilizer. So, I'll just repeat and say antagonism occurred when the sprayer or the sticker was mixed. That's that plant that grow like it. And then you get low percentages control with buffer emitters and stickers and plant oil seem to have a relatively good influence on glyphosate. Okay, so now I talked about I talked to you about ammonium sulfide. Ammonium sulfide just um, make your water nice and easy. So it takes out salts, if they're salts, it makes it a nice water to work with. And just check what happens when you add ammonium sulfide. You remember those three there? Add the ammonium sulfide, check. The correct choice, the correct knowledge. That's possible. And, but the other problem is, and I can talk for hours about this, if you just do an ammonium sulfate trial, and you take up all the wetters and the stickers and the oils, and you do an ammonium sulfate trial, you will get the blue one, because not ammonium sulfates are effective. Some of them taste like water. Some of them is like cream soda, they only have the blue color. So, I would really urge you to Maybe if you are really using glyphosate or uh, other herbicides in a big way and you want to make the right decision, maybe just one day phone me or send me an email and I can actually give you the, because I've tested hundreds of products. I know, I know what to use. Just give me an email and I'll send you the names that maybe rather use them than the cream soda. <laughs> Okay, so I said various adjuvants have a positive effect, but using the, the wrong one will bring you nothing. Just input costs. Know your adjuvants, make informed choices, and find the people that know us. There's really, there's not a lot of people with adjuvant background, but you can find me. And if I don't know, I will know somebody that will know. So we will solve your problem, I promise. Okay, but like I said, in the end, it doesn't matter which method you use. Um, my herbicides, mechanical eradication, it had, whoop, mechanical eradication, anything. In the end, it's important to um, minimize the risk of reinvasion of invasives or of crop weeds. And then I would just like to thank the Agricultural Research Council for making the study possible, the Winter Sharon Trust for funding, the study, but do some of the king my contribution. And then I forgot the most important one here at the bottom. And I would like to thank the South African Weed Science Society, who actually funded me for attending this, con this, this symposium. And to show you that the commercial or the industrial side actually has the impact on the invasive side. We can work together. Thank you. Thanks, Esther. All right, we are ready for questions now. <laughs> Any sense?
Thanks, Lisa. Just a comment. Um, this is an, a real eye-opener, and this is something I wanted to hear because we've been talking about adjuvants, and uh, in the sense that we, we've been wondering, you know, or, or, or should we try something, should we do something different, and adjuvants came up as a, a possible way of improving our, our the efficacy of what we're doing. And I was thinking for our particular situation with Spartina, um, you know, perhaps what we should do is um, ask the Department of Agriculture if we could test anazepa, but in the meantime, we could make our glyphosate um, applications more effective by taking tea. So thank you very much. I just want to say that it also depends on if you mix your water, what kind of carrier water you use for your mixture. Because if you just, if you've got a, um, for instance, I know a lot of producers shows use borehole water, and it's poor water, can, uh, water, poor water quality, it's got a lot of iron and stuff. So it depends on which water you use. So the kind of water you use will determine which adjuvant you use. So maybe if you want to talk in future, you're more than welcome to contact me. And I think if I can help you, we'll do that. Um, um, my question, I have the advantage of knowing, knowing nothing about herb, herbicides or adjuvants. Um, but what bothers me is if I'm an eater working on Spartina or, I don't know, Graham Harding working on Prosopis, do I have to do this whole range of tests using all these adjuvants or can I rely on your oats? Why should I rely on your oats to tell me what's going to work best on Spartina or Mesquite? Luckily, glyphosate is a universal herbicide. If it works on a vena, we've tested it on several. All these adjuvants, the, the, how this started is I do trials for companies before they get the products <coughs> registered. So there's been field trials, there's been numerous trials on everything that you can spray glyphosate on. <coughs> so you don't ever have to worry about my oats um, with respect to a cacti or a dandelion or, a, or your grass in front of all your lawn. That's amazing. <laughs> it's been eight years of research, so it's quite a vast amount of research. But, but yet you'd be more convinced if you did show that these two or three other species of the pattern was the same. Yeah, as, as a, again, I'm not fit, I'm naive, I have a clue what Okay, let, yeah. okay, let me tell you. First of all, if glyphosate, we did a lot of work with, with glyphosate and paraquat because they are pre emergent. The whole thing with us is the problem arised when, um, I don't know if you know about herbicide resistance problems that are that's currently in South Africa. I don't know if, if you know about it, but it's huge. We are really struggling. So we moved to um, different ways of doing this. That's why we went to Agilence. So we tested it on, we have done it on several crops. We planted actual crops and we tried we planted several weeds and we tried it broadleaf weeds, grass weeds. But like I said, if I have to explain to you and show to you eight years of research, I can have the symposium all on my own. <laughs> we can organize something like that in a free state and you all can come get very cold. So, so we have data and you're more than welcome to come. Yeah, that's the last question. Thank you. Um, we of us who don't know about herbicides have been warned that the adjuvants are toxic to aquatic vertebrates, so using them in a, in a wetland system is, is, is a no-no. What do you have to say to that? Um, there was a, a, a series of adjuvants that actually did that. Um, I know of the, the, one, one, the one that we used in herbicides was Agrol 90. They withdrew them from the market as of 2008, so you can't get any more. They've got replacements that they, they call it something, but they are safe for aquatic and ecos, um, ecoskelet, or what, what do you call it, for the inside skin. So they replaced it, so they took it off the market, you can't get it anymore. Except if you're illegal, but, but I don't use it anymore. <laughs> Um, that's all we have time for now, so I'm going to you can speak after the session. So thank you very much for the opportunity to join with us. Yeah.